that period in the in the 70s yeah. um, was when you were part of you know a right good team so we've, we've really put you right under the spotlight yeah. here um, who's your goalie <sighs> again I know other people sit here and say this or that toss and there was, there was some great goalkeepers but I'm going to go with Campbell Money. Yeah. yeah. I don't think you can argue with that, Ruffy. You'd be happy with that, would you? Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, I think Campbell of that era was up there, top four in the, in yeah. the league anyway and he was their great servant to the club. Yeah. And I would just say, uh, you know, the other goalies, as you say, like Billy Thompson and uh, Donald Hunter who was in the championship winning team but Campbell, not just even his goalkeeping, he was, he was a real leader. Uh, I mean as well and he, um, that's how he gets annoyed yeah absolutely nice of you to dig yourself out uh, <laughs> mentioning a couple Same of my best uh, you spot to to oh, yeah, sorry for being a cynic I knew exactly what he was doing um, ok your yeah. back four is a tough oh, one isn't it oh she's oh, incredible again but uh, again so many great right backs uh, I've went a four at the back as you say but I would go with Alec Beckett Alec Beckett you know, with Tommy Wilson there's uh, John Youngs there's different ones uh, but Alec Beckett for me was an incredible fullback. No, it was no just it was no just attacking fullback. But you get these days, it was a brilliant defender. Alec was as tough as nails. And uh, again, another and that was a great thing. When I think everybody, you know, I go for people who are, are leader of people as well. And he was definitely that as well. Yeah. Alec. Could he play? Oh, he could play. You remember? Uh, the winning goal at Parkhead and the It was an absolute raker <laughs> Off, it was a belter and It was incredible it was, uh, Do you know what was great about that goal? I don't think Alec had ever scored that many goals no. And he was in a state of shock when he actually oh, scored. He looked about like that as if to say <laughs> what, what did I do? Yeah. <laughs> but he was a great player honestly And he was uh, Again I love players with that determination And will to win And uh, Alec was that Yeah. Oh. Okay, left back? Uh, left back for me would be again a lot of good there, but Ian Monroe. Yeah. Ian Monroe when he came to St Mum. Uh, when I first joined St Mum, Ian Monroe was a midfield player and they went to Hibs and then come back and stuff. But left back, you no, know, playing for St Mum, they get some Scottish caps. Playing for St Mum at that position, Ian was uh, a real winner as well, great in the ball. Um, no, he was a top player. Yeah. So, yeah, I would go with Ian Monroe. Yeah, you know, Ruffy uh, taped over Ian Monroe marking Maradona out of the game in uh, 19. <laughs> That's the type of thing Ruffy yeah. does with his mates, by the way. But Rose a good player. Yeah. Super. I played with Ian in the Scotland under 18 team against Holland. Uh, Ibrooks, uh, great player. You knew right at the start, even at that age, he, ah. he was so focused. Yeah. You know, he's one of the focused players yeah. that you get and everyone wanted to yeah. win it all the time and that and he just 24 hours just thought about football yeah first three players not bad Hugh because Absolutely. obviously we're not going to argue with it Tony's personal mm. choice now it's where I think there's a lot of fallouts that are about to actually just befall him yeah. as he names them well I think he's, he's now going into territory where the the, the competition is fierce yeah. and fierce yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> really, uh, uh, I mean, you've got your centre backs to pick, but yeah, once, you get to, yeah. once you get to midfield and up front, it's, it's pressure. Yeah. What about your two centre halves? Two centre backs, I've got to go with uh, Bobby Reid, who uh, played in the Alec Ferguson era, was destined to go to Liverpool, and uh, but got a terrible injury up at the under 21 game with Scotland, up at Inverness. Bobby Reid was. I can sort of say very, you know him really well, Alan Hansen type. Yeah. If you look at Bobby Reid was a, a real threat in the opposition box. He scored 10 goals a year, 11 goals a year. Wow. But what a tremendous footballer he was. In the days, you know, I mean, you generally were encouraged just to defend and stuff. Mm. But Bobby could take it and play eh, brilliant in the air. Um, so I see, he was destined for big things and it was just through injury. So Bobby Reid for me and centre back and beside him, there's so many others, but I have to go for Jack Copeland. Uh, when he was, him and, uh, was definitely, when the young team at Sir Alec had, he brought Jackie Copeland in. And Jackie Copeland was just an incredible uh, player, uh, leader of men again, I talk about. Um, hard as nails, great leader on the park, could play as well. I think if you speak to any of the, the strikers that were about that time, hated playing against Jack. <laughs> he played with Dundee United before us. As yeah. Remember, he was there. But Jack and 
him and Bobby Reid together. Incredible. Now, we're not going to get you to comment on yourself because you know, a million and one St Mirren fans will comment on it, so we've put you in the team. Right, um, okay. So you've got three alongside you. Who are you picking? <sighs> Again, my season out season when you go back to the Championship team and I've played with so many great midfield players at St Mirren, uh, but I've got to go for Billy Stark for me. Billy Stark, I've got to say, was a goal-scoring midfield player and was very, very, say underrated, he wasn't really, because people knew how a good player he is. He went to Celtic, Aberdeen's all yeah. the top managers signed him. But a great thing about Billy Stark was when I watched him, you know, the back post when he scored goals, but he never refused to take a ball mm -hmm. under... You know, the pressure he was under for most players he would get <laughs> <laughs> you're on your own. Starkey would always take the ball under severe pressure anywhere and play. What a player Starkey was. Yeah. And as I say, goal scoring midfield player, always arrived at the back post, incredible. And the other two? The other two, um, again, and sort of midfield, whatever, you've got Starkey and you've picked my myself, uh, so the wide left player for me, I'm playing a 4-4-2, mm -hmm. so it's Starkey, he's have picked myself, I would have went for others, but uh, wide left for me would be Peter Weir, and that's leading guys like Ian Scanlon and mm -hmm. players like that out, which yeah. was pff, the hardest thing to do, but Peter Weir was a genius. Peter Weir going to Aberdeen at that time, probably, mm -hmm. not nothing against Aberdeen, I thought, when you look at the one, the European mm -hmm. thing, Trop, but he was a missing link, what Aberdeen needed at that time, I personally think. Yeah. <clears throat> and if you probably talk to Sir Alec, he would maybe agree, I don't know, but yeah. Peter Weir was an incredible player. Mm. Yeah, incredible and player. alongside you, you've picked a young guy. Uh, yes, I have, sorry. I've left him, because uh, I thought Alexei Richardson, who played in the the championship winning team, there was other, uh, Billy Abercrombies and there's players like that, but I've got uh, Brian Hamilton, and I've got to give it to Paul Lambert. Paul Lambert was a special player. Uh, you could even tell, I mean, winning the Cup, he was only 17 at the time, <laughs> winning the Scottish Cup. And in that midfield at that time, as I say, Paul Lambert was quality. He was real quality. And you could always tell he was going to be a top player. Yeah, so you've got two left. It's not a bad midfield to you, is it? Absolutely terrific midfield. I mean, I was, I was, I was putting three in, in the midfield, so it's... Uh, it was uh, Tony, obviously, Paul Lambert, and I was putting Ian Ferguson in. Yeah, yeah. I thought, you know, because uh, he was so powerful for someone one time. So he was. But I put Peter Weir in my front three. So yeah, I've, you were I've, going 4 3 3. I'm going 4 3 3 because I think the you three. You were ahead of your time, weren't well, you? Uh, <laughs> well, I just think that the. the, the, uh, the what well, up front? I mean, you've got you've got to get. Well, we wait and. Three with Tony, but there's certainties in the team. Just <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, you've got two guys. Thanks. <laughs> that's that's uh, you turning the screw. I'll, you've I'll got to go back to the old five. <laughs> I remember the days. I days they played five. <laughs> so you could pick five for some merit, but you've got you've got two howitzers. I know, I know, and I'm not doing it. Uh, the Frank McGarvey, definitely. No, I'm not just doing that. So I wouldn't be in football terms sympathy. Frank McGarvey was probably one of the best players I've ever played with. Uh, so I'd play, play him up front. Uh, he was tremendous. I say, if you look at his record, it's among over 20 goals a season. He would create as many again. He was an incredible player, brilliant in the dressing room, everything about him. But on the park, uh, he was incredible. So Frank McGarvey, for me, would be up front. With, <clears throat> personally, and even recently with Frank McGarvey, we had this talk, even in the, the hospice away early, uh, when we first went in, and McAvenny to me is the next one I'd pick. But McAvenny is the best player I think I've played with in, in terms of uh, for St Mum. Yeah. I think McAvenny just edged it over Frank McGarvey, and we have these arguments. <laughs> <laughs> me and Frank is. Where well, uh, Frank uh, tells yeah, you exactly what it is. <laughs> uh, and it was very close, but McAvenny to me, but imagine having the two up front. No. Uncensored, unbiased, unmatched. The Football Show on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel.